I bought one of these hot water heater jackets mostly for the material but I thought I'd try it out. Now it says on here pays for itself in six months that's an attractive proposition. It also says uh, stops 97% of heat thawed through walls. I doubt that and so I doubt this claim as well. Let's check it out. So how much heat does this tank really lose? Let's take some measurements of the tank. 17.6 degrees and ambient off the walls 14.2. Let's take a few more readings. So I worked out the average of the temperature readings of the tank and then the ambient temperature and that makes for a 3.4 degree difference. And then looking that up on my spreadsheet, let's round it up to 3.5 degrees. That comes out to about 22.4 watts heat loss per square meter. And I worked out the tank top and side surface area is 3.1 square meters. So multiplying that together, we're losing about 69 watts on that tank constantly, or about 1.66 kilowatt hours per day. And at 12 and a half cents per kilowatt hours, we're using 21 cents per day of energy leaking through the tank walls. Now let's suppose this stuff could stop all of the heat loss. Then we're looking at 21 cents per day. Um, and I paid $57.50 with taxes, divide by 21 cents. That works out to 273 days or about nine months for a thing to pay for itself. That is if this thing could stop all the heat, which I doubt. And even then, more than six months, but it would still be pretty good. Now to double check, let's see what the tank is actually set to. 55.7 here. Let's say 57 degrees. And the tank is insulated with uh, polyurethane foam and I measured that to be about 1.65 inches thick. Now polyurethane foam according to Wikipedia has an insulation R value of 3.4 to 6.7 per inches. Let's say 5 per inch uh, times 1.65 inches works out to R8. Now 57 degrees minus 17 degrees for the tank walls is a 40 degree temperature difference. So going back to my spreadsheet with a three and a half degree temperature difference between the walls and ambient, I have to look up a column for 40 degrees, but I'm only going to 28 degrees. So let's look at the uh, 20 degree column and we'll double that. Going down to the three and a half degree difference, that would be R4. But we need to double that because the temperature difference is actually twice as much, so that also works out to R8. So that gives me confidence that uh, these numbers here are correct. I got these spacer strips installed. These are supposed to space this insulation material away from the tank a little bit, resulting in a bit of an air gap, which increases the insulation. All right, got the tank all wrapped. There wasn't a separate piece for the top, so I just kind of folded it over and taped it together there. So I got actually more than one layer on most of the top. So I've taken a few readings behind the insulation and the average to about 22.3 degrees. The ambient is about what it was before. So before we had 57 for the tank and the surface was 17, so 40 degree difference. Now the surface is 22 degrees at 35 degree difference. So that means our heat flow is reduced to this or about 0.875, which is 12 and percent less than what it was before. So let's take our 69 watt calculated heat loss from before, 
multiply that by 12.5% and we're saving 8.6 watts. That's about 0.2 kilowatt hours per day and at 12.5 cents per kilowatt hour comes to 2.5 cents per day. Taking the $57.50 for the insulation, divide that by 2.5 cents is 2300 days or 6.3 years for this insulation to pay for itself. That's a far cry from six months. So the insulation value of this stuff is much less than I thought it would be. And if it reduces the heat loss of the tank by about one eighth by my calculations, then the tank is about R8. That means this adds about uh, R1, so not a whole lot. And if you want to reduce the uh, heat leakage out of your hot water tank by just a tiny bit, what you could just do is uh, turn it down by a few degrees. Or if you're not using a whole lot of hot water because, for instance, you're single, what you could do on an electrical hot water tank is to reduce the lower thermostat by quite a lot. And you would still have the same temperature of hot water coming up the top because the uh, top thermostat and heater would heat it all the way up. The only problem with this is you would run out of hot water more quickly, for instance, if you take a hot shower or fill up the bathtub. So it's not something I'm going to do with the family. So I was just searching the web for other information on hot water heater jackets and there are other ones available. For instance, this one claims to be R6.7 and it looks like it's much thicker and then uh, you could just wrap insulation around it like this. Just plain old fiberglass insulation or for instance, this one is much thicker. This one is also much thicker material. This one is fiberglass. So there are definitely better ones out there. The one that I got is this one, just isn't very effective. Also, if your hot water heater is insulated with fiberglass insulation instead of polyurethane foam like ours is, then the insulation of the tank will be less and the relative benefit will be greater.